All right, we always try to get both sides on this uh, Israeli uh, conflict, and it is still going on after all of these months, six months right now, since the October 7th attacks. And Israel, no matter what you think of those on the left or right of this, are dealing with this head on. Tal Hanrik is the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu spokesperson, kind enough to join us, maybe to react to what the former Prime Minister Ehud Olmert had to say. Tal, always good to see you. Um, I, I think the gist of what the Prime Minister was saying, the former Prime Minister, is Go slow, be careful, um, let, let's not escalate this. What do you think of that? Uh, thank you for having me on, Neil. I did not watch the full interview because uh, I'm doing a series of interviews at this hour. Sure. As you know, my country is on high alert right now. Um, first, regarding Iran, uh, we don't seek wars. We don't seek violence. But this concept that we're acting upon, that the, as the prime minister stated, it, is if someone is trying to hurt us, somebody's threatening to hurt us, we will hurt them. We're not seeking wars again, but we will do whatever it takes uh, to defend ourselves. We uh, hope that Iran doesn't make another mistake and, and pushes toward another escalation because hmm. they will bear the consequences. So could I, one of the issues that has come up on the show with a number of people, including uh, your former ambassador, Danny Danan, now in the Knesset, uh, he was telling me that distinction between a direct attack by Iran versus one of its proxies. Now, of course, an attack is an attack, and whether it's blessed by Iran or Iran is doing it itself, it's still not great. Um, but do you draw that distinction? So I, I don't want to speculate here on air what will happen, because as you understand, everything understand. is so sensitive. We'll have to wait and see how the things unfold. Uh, I can tell you, uh, you know, in, in the latest developments in the region, and I'm sure that you reported in the past hour, uh, you know, there was the seizure of that ship right. in the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, you've had over 40 missiles, missile launches from Lebanon into Israel, additional missiles this morning, two Hezbollah drones. But I think uh, to set the record straight, here so the viewers will understand Iran has been threatening and attacking Israel via its proxies for a very, very long time. You know, Hamas and the October 7th attack was another very uh, brutal example of that. And then on October 8th, Hezbollah took their marching orders and funding from Tehran and, and, and decided to, to join in, so to say, and open another front. We also hope we won't see an escalation there. But then you have other Iranian-funded proxies across the region uh, that have been attacking us from various territories, if it's Iraq, if it's in Syria. Um, and, and you have the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which is fully funded by Iran, the second largest terrorist organization in, in Gaza. Now, these uh, proxies, if the, the Houthis in Yemen, they pose a global threat. The Houthis are a global threat to maritime commerce. The militias in, in Iran, in Iraq, rather, the same ones that attacked us and, and fired a, a drone at Elat, our southern city, just a few days ago, are the same militias that attack U.S. bases in the region. Tal, um, when is the last time Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke to Joe Biden? I guess what I'm asking is, has they've spoken since that, that phone call that got a little tense? I think that's probably putting it politely. But have they spoken since, especially about these latest Iran developments? Well, since we put out the last statement, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but I can tell you that there are constant contacts between Jerusalem and Washington because we do see eye to eye in what pertains to the war objectives in, in Gaza as we define them. And we're fully coordinated in what pertains to this uh, threat from Iran. General Kurilla, the, the head of CENTCOM, was sent to the region. He's on the ground. Uh, uh, you know, there, there are situational assessments, which he participated in underway. And uh, we're fully, fully coordinated on this. Every person in Israel was reassured this week to hear President Biden that, you know, his message to Iran was simply don't. And he reaffirmed the, the commitment of the United States, uh, he called it ironclad, um, to Israel's security. So let me just, I don't want to belabor that point, Tal, and you've been very patient, but uh, this Rafa invasion of that, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, regardless of what happens around, is, is still on. You heard, uh, maybe you didn't because you've been busy doing a lot of interviews, I get that, but Prime Minister Omer had said that would be a mistake. President Biden's made it very clear that that would be a mistake. You obviously do not feel that would be a mistake. No, we don't feel this way. There are four Hamas operational battalions in Rafah. We're not going to leave them untouched. One of our ministers, uh, Benny Yens, uh, in the War Cabinet, he said that that will be equal to putting out 80% of the fire, leaving 20% and, you know, 
hoping for the best. We know that's not okay. the case. If we leave these battalions there, Hamas will rearm, regroup, attack us again, and, and, and carry out another October 7th massacre as they vowed to do. We will not tolerate 16 more years of Hamas rules in, rule in Gaza with missiles raining on our communities. That's not an option. And you know very well uh, why uh, Rafah is located in a very strategic position, Neil. It's, it's the, the southernmost city in Gaza, which borders Egypt. From that border, this is uh, where much of the ammunition of the, in the terror infrastructure has infiltrated into Gaza over the years. We cannot allow that to happen. And you Got also so, but, uh, covered the you, I, I don't mean to jump on you. But what, you're, what you're clearly saying is, is Rafa is still an option, and it's still something the prime minister is considering. So thank you, Tal, very much. I do appreciate that. Be safe. Thank you, Neil. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.